Well, hello, kids. Welcome to another, live, well, it's my live session here at the Parkzilla Studios. Welcome to uh, April 1st, April Fool's Day, which rather ironically is my, today is actually my 11 year anniversary with the Outdoor Network, which is the parent company of Parkzilla and a few other few companies. I'll let you do, uh, let you do the research. Great place to work for. Great company to work for, great owners or owner, and uh, well, they're doing a lot of a lot of impressive things and have done a lot of impressive things. But there's one coming up in particular that I can't talk about just yet. But I, I'm sure the uh, multimedia team is busy putting together the best way to promote something large <laughs> that the Outdoor Network has been working on. But uh, for today, we're just gonna go through a few questions, see if we can get a few answers out of me, and then, I don't know, call it a week, and it has been a week. I, I know I say that almost every week, but whew, <sighs> I'm tired. My back hurts. I ain't as, uh, ain't as good as I once was. Isn't that a Toby Keith song, I think? All right, first order of business, let's swing around and see what Reminders, of course, you know, I'm going to say something about the Monster, Monster Energy AMA Supercross Series. And of course, we're doing another giveaway this week. This week, there we are giving away a pair of Motion Pro Titanium Alloy Pro Light wrenches. And that contest will run until next Friday. Of course, go to partzilla.com forward slash LP forward slash PRMX to enter and there is no charge to do so. And ne then next Friday, we'll start taking entries for a risk racing whole shot practice starting gate. And I, I actually saw where that was uh, kind of a difficult one to get, so I ordered it like a month ago. So it's actually sitting in my office waiting to be given away. So definitely, uh, definitely hit us up, especially if you're in the motocross world. That would be a great way to practice up. All right, a couple of questions I may have missed last week. My land up north off grid. That's a heck of a name. What to do with a 2003 Honda 400EX? <laughs> I've got one of those. Gas tank petcock that can't complete the shutoff fuel to gas turned on after sitting for seven years. Open and closed it. Is it possibly missing a seal? Well, on the inside of that petcock, you've got an inlet and an outlet, and you've got a, a small valve. And in between that valve, you have a uh, rubber gasket, or more like an O-ring. Well, it's not an O-ring, but it is a gasket made out of rubber. And over time, those you know, rubber wears out, it gets hard, and it's leaking through there. So I'm, I can't remember if that one is actually one that you can pull a couple of Phillips screws off and then just replace that rubber piece, or if you have to replace the whole whole gasket. And I can't really see that far up on uh, our 400EX to tell you that. But if you go to partzilla.com and go to that particular year, make a model, go to the fuel tank, it should have an exploded diagram. And if, if that little uh, gasket that I'm talking, rubber gasket I'm talking about is available, it will show up there. So that's, that's definitely gonna be the problem. And, oh yeah, sitting for seven years, yeah, you've got a lot of stuff to replace in there. Um, even if you can get the, uh, the petcock cleaned up, the, uh, the pickup tube actually goes up into the bottom of the fuel tank and it has a very fine plastic filter. Um, it's a piece of, almost looks like a plastic straw and then it's got a filter surface around it. And I guarantee you that's all been turned into one solid chunk of goo more than likely. So you will have to look at replacing the entire pet guy, more than likely. All right, Enrique had asked me, I'm having a problem with my CBR1000R. It turns on, but as soon as I get on it and set upright, it turns off. Hmm. And the tip sensor is already bypassed. Where should I look first? Well, that's where I would have sent you first is the tip sensor. And when you say it's bypassed, how was that done? So I'm pretty sure it's looking for a resistance. And if it doesn't see it, it's going to trip it. So I'm more than likely when you're sitting it up and then kicking your um, side stand up, that's when it's shutting down because it thinks it's all the way over. So I think it's been bypassed incorrectly, in my opinion. All right. 
Nick had asked me, I'm having a power steering light come on sporadically on a 2020 Polaris Sportsman 850. I know my stator battery and relay are good. Could the regulator be causing this? No, it's the only symptom I have. Well, I know that there were problems with the uh, the power steering having issues on the, the 850. Now, if you're worried about your regulator rectifier maybe being the, the culprit instead of a failing uh, power steering unit, well, do a voltage check with a, just a, a voltometer. At rest, you should be north of 12.5, 12.6 volts. At a uh, healthy idle, should be around 13.5, but not more than 14.5, nowhere close to 14.5. So take a look at that with just a, um, a multimeter and see what you see. All right. Dang, I caught up with y'all last week. Well, there was one more from D11. It's on the next page. Could a faulty starter relay output weak voltage to the coil? Two separate circuits here. If we're talking about your, your coil as far as your ignition coil versus a starter relay. So I'm not sure what you were asking me, D11. If you're on this week, drop a note in the uh, the chat and give me some more information as to which circuits we're talking about. All right. Well, it looks like we've got a few people lining up. Okay. Don't want my videographer to get upset at me. If, oh, she doesn't like those panels in the top. I'll scoot down a little bit. How's that, Tracy? Is that good for you? Is that 20% above my head? <laughs> Uh, you gotta love uh, harassing your coworkers. Alex G, hey John, your videos are my favorite to watch while I eat lunch in the shop. Cool, uh, wouldn't be as successful without your guidance. Much love. Uh, well, you're very welcome. And thanks for dropping by and spending a little time with us. Panagiotis, hi John. Good Friday. It is a good Friday, Panagiotis. Did you look back on our uh, either our Facebook or Instagram? Uh, we uh, posted your a couple of your photos of you ripping it up over in Sweden. If you haven't looked, go take a peek. Uh, I'm sure that they're still up. Hanef EFI, hello, how are you, dear? I am well, sir. I'm very well. Julian is asking me, hey, John, I'm stuck. I don't know what to choose from, a TRX 450R or 400EX. I like the ease of maintenance on the 400 and the power of the 450. I do mostly trail riding, but I love to open it up a lot. Thanks. Well, it sounds like you're in the right in the middle of those two uh, transition machines. I've, I've owned a 400 EX and my son rides a uh, Yamaha 450R. And I really, well, back when I could get my knees to actually function correctly, I like the 400 EX better. It was, um, more comfortable, not as high strung. Suspension was softer, and uh, Brantley has he often commented that you know this 450 just literally beat the crap out of him because the suspension from the factory is set up to deal with some you know race level events, and that is not what you really experience when you're on the track or trail. But what we did to his is we calmed down the suspension a little bit. We went to race tech and uh, swapped out the springs for a different rate front and back and then adjusted the rebound to give it a more plush feel. And he could still run it on a uh, on a MX track or a, you know, an open track, but it was more manageable for longer rides in the, uh, in the woods and uh, doing trail riding sessions on it. So if you really like the power of the, the 450, Go ahead and go with it and just calm the suspension down a little bit so it's uh, more manageable to deal with on the trails. That's what we did, and uh, it worked out pretty well. Stefanu, I can even pronounce that last name. I'll say that quite often. Hello, I've been following for a long time. What do you think about the 2006 Raptor 700? Is it reliable? It is, as long as you don't get carried away on... Uh, modifying the top end with extra compression um, or a higher compression ratio. I, I believe it's um, Cuervo Racing. Uh, if you want to look up their site, uh, they're fantastic at uh, modifying the Raptor 700. It's what they specialize in. And if you're really going to string one out, you want to look at one of their uh, case strengthening kits because there's a couple of weak points in the bottom case itself. When you really start trying to get more more oomph out of it, which I'm not sure why anybody would, 
they're prone to crack. But are they reliable as long as they're stock? Yes, they are. And there's no doubt about that. Uh, Christian backs me up on this. Yes, a 2016 Raptor 700. It's a beast and very reliable. I would agree. DGC Weed Nerd. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Cheers. How are you today? Mm. Ashanth. Hey there. Okay, I have an R6. It's a 2006 model. Could you please advise the best performance upgrades? Where can I do the bump the the AC uh, the the HP up a little bit? The usual suspects go with a full exhaust. Um, although the one that's on a stock R6, it is pretty strong in and of its own. But to get something a little bit more free flowing. It's really your choice, and then go with a power commander to uh, open it up a little bit. The power commander, you don't have to go into reflashing your ECU. It's simple to do. They've already got maps out there you know, for different exhaust systems. I mean, the R6 is pretty quick, just out of, straight out of the box, but they make it, Yamaha makes it really easy to get a few more horses out of it, you know, without much effort. So just an exhaust system and then the, uh, the power commander with a good, good map should uh, wake it up a little bit more. Cold War Man. Hi, John. I have a problem with the Honda TRX 350 89 Foreman. 350 Foreman? I thought that'd be a 400. Um, the fuel level indicator turns on and off. I decided to remove the sensor, and after pressing the float to the plate, it worked how to fix it. All right, let me read that again. I decided to remove the sensor, and you're talking about the, uh, the fuel level sensor, and I think that's just a mechanical device in the tank itself. After pressing the float to the plate, it worked how to fix it. And I believe that uh, it's mechanical and that lower um, lower section, it kind of works in a helical direction. And that turn as it goes up is what makes your, um, your level either go one way or another. And typically you just have to clean those back up and make sure that that float, if you want to call it that, isn't full of fuel. And... Uh, I think that uh, that would be it. Found a geotist. Yes, I did. And Instagram, it's amazing. Thanks. Now, thank you for sending them. And uh, well, well, just thank you for sending those and sharing them with us. Snow Patrol. So my body is trying, is only trying to rebuild the top end of a 1992 Yamaha 600 with 70,000 miles. <laughs> Tell him to do the whole damn thing. I think that'll, that'll come to fruition as he, as he gets in there. But hey, if the bearings are still in good shape and you're not getting excessive wear, leave it alone. Just do uh, pistons, rings, and maybe uh, rework those valves and or seals and uh, call it a day. But uh, if he gets down and that, that crankshaft feels like it's supposed to, let her keep going. <clears throat> Julian, suspension is not a big deal for me. I'm worried if I'd be disappointed with the 400 I've owned the 400EX and the KFX 450, and I currently decided to go with the TRX 450 or 400EX. I'm only 15. 15, whoo. You're not supposed to be on that machine yet, but um, I'm not the dealership, nor am I your dad. So uh, whichever one you decide to go with. <laughs> Price to ride is big for me. Oh, I understand that. <laughs> Isn't that the case for all of us? 315, guys, I'm already catching up with y'all. And I answered the the, uh, the questions. I have a feeling I know what's happening. Um, we're getting uh, a few less viewers, mainly because the weather's freaking awesome out there. And good grief. Um, if I didn't have things to do with the house, I'd be loading up a toy and heading to an ATV and side-by-side -side park because this is the time of year to do it. Oof. Especially down here in Southwest Georgia where it's cold for almost you know, two weeks and then fantastic weather for about three weeks and then hotter than the sun for the rest of the year. <laughs> Jim Milchi said, that's a lot of engine for 15 years old. Always wear your helmet. I definitely agree with that. At GAT, all the gear, all the time. Uh, my son, of course, grew up around four-wheelers. You know, 
80, 250, and 450R. And oh, he was so upset with me the, with his 80 when uh, I had him start wearing real motocross boots. Oh, he was so angry about that. It was a big protest that went on, but yeah, I won because it's being a parent is not a democracy, it's a dictatorship, as it should be. But he got over it and he still wears all the right equipment to this day. So, mission accomplished. Mm. Cold War man came back. The float is on a metal sleeve, and after a year, the float is loose. It must be getting caught up, or it's probably worn grooves in the side of it to where it's, it's not reading accurately because it's unable to move up and down all the way. So, there may not be a fix for that except just replacing it. <laughs> I'm waiting for the stream to end and then I'm going riding. Oh, heck yeah. And Panagio just said, yeah, the weather is exactly the opposite here. That would make sense because uh, you're on the other side of the world from me. Julian, I've been riding since the age of four. That's when my son started and I did as well on that machine right there. Of course, my feet couldn't touch the pegs, so... I just ride around in circles in the first gear, and uh, Dad would walk up next to me if I blew the horn. And that worked great until I ran out of fuel blowing the horn on the way down. <laughs> I've been riding since age of four, so I know how to handle the KFX pretty well. I just can't decide what to go with reliability or power. Well, I think you'll have both with the 450R. And uh, the 450R is a very reliable machine. It's just like riding an ang angry chainsaw. No, but I want, would that be my weapon of choice? No, um, I'm old. <laughs> You're young and made out of rubber, so you can deal with it. Go ahead and go with the 450. I know it's a good bit more expensive, but uh, it will serve you for years to come. Stephanie, is the lower steering stem bearing hard to replace on the Raptor? Many things will have to come off to do it. It's it's not too hard to do, um, but you're right. It's the hard part is just getting to it, and then you may have a hard. I've never done one on the on the on that particular unit on the Raptor, but I know that they uh, they being motion pro makes a uh, a bearing a steering head removal tool that makes life livable because otherwise you're going to be trying to use a drift of some type to knock it out from the top, you know, hitting it from the bottom. Now if you can get an edge. You know, one of the edges on uh, the bearing race, great. But I've gotten into some that were damn near impossible. So phew. it's just a matter of getting all the way to it. Uh, and there's just no fun way around that. Just lay out a, a big table next to the machine and start, to take, and start taking off parts in order. Use uh, Ziploc bags with a dry eraser or uh, with permanent markers so you can keep up with what goes where. So it's all fun and games when you're tearing it apart. And it gets awfully confusing when you're trying to put it back together you know, a week or two later. But that take a lot of photos. I mean, come on, no excuse. It's right there. <clears throat> Panagiotis, I start a new build, a Jaguar XJ12 5.3. Well, you know, you know I'm a car guy, right? Um, you're going to need to send Hank some more pictures when you start tearing into that. I want to see it. <laughs> cool car. Absolutely. Dennis Brooks, it's raining here in Maine. I called about the fuel map for the wife seen no luck. <sighs> okay. I, you did find a dyno through Instagram in Connecticut, like three hours or so from me. Not bad. I'll take it. That sounds like the best way to go. Um, sorry they couldn't help you out over at Alpa Racing. Uh, hey, it was worth the shot. But um, let us know what you come up with and maybe uh, send us some dyno numbers once you're done. I, I really want to see what she can do. <laughs> Christian had said, well, I got my Raptor 700 when I was 16. Rock on, dude. Luke, do you have to put preload compression rebound at the softest settings when changing fork, with fork seals and oil? When you're just changing it? And I don't think so. Um, they want you to back them all the way out if you're going to actually pull the cartridges out of the unit itself. It's more or less... A, a starting point and or an end point and then a starting point of when it goes back together. I think it has something to do with the uh, the distances involved as well. Why you don't want to, um, why you want to back them all the way out to their lowest setting. Let's think about that. 
if you had them tightened up, that would give more resistance and hence making it harder to get oil out. So yes, I'm going to say go ahead and back them out if you're doing an oil change, because that'll make it easier to flush out the existing oil and then bring in the new oil. So just make sure you count appropriately and write it down somewhere. Because if you remember, it's like mine, you're not going to remember. <laughs> DGC, 77 yesterday, 28 and snow today. And wow, in Pennsylvania, 50 degree swing. Jeez, folks. Talk about bipolar weather. Unreal. Julian came back. Thanks for the extra opinion. Really, the main thing stopping me from getting another 450 is the shim valves. I've never done them before, but I can do pretty much everything else uh, in the top. Julian, it's, it's, it's not that tough. Don't be afraid of that. I mean, uh, you will have to buy a decent uh, micrometer so you can measure the shims and a good set of um, feeler gauges, but it's not something you're going to have to do very often. You know, Brantley's machine is... We've, we're coming up on seven years old and we've been in the, into the top end once. So that, I wouldn't let that scare me at all. I really wouldn't. Stefano, Stefano, thanks for the answer. It's awesome channel. Keep it up. I'll, I'll do my best. Julian, I've never done the bottom end. Not many people have, and it's not something that you're going to have to do as a, a maintenance. When you have to go into the bottom end, it's a ma machine that, Probably got pushed a little too hard, a little too long, and something let go. Um, for us mere mortals, I mean, most of these machines will last a lifetime. I mean, uh, you may have to do a top end, which is just piston and rings, valve seals. Maybe you've got a, a leaking valve cover gasket. I, I don't hear about too many uh, stock machines uh, losing head gaskets. I mean, unless you uh, up the compression ratio, and you're going to be good to go. So don't let that scare you off at all. Plus, just watch one of our videos. I mean, we, um, I don't, I'm not sure we're through editing it, but um, I did a, uh, a build for a, a CRF 450R, which is basically the same engine that's in the, uh, the TRX 450R. And I went all the way down to the crankshaft and back out. Hopefully you, you'll never have to do that, but yeah, the information's out there. <laughs> not a problem. All right, kids, I have caught up with you. Nobody else has got anything? I mean, if, um, if this is all we've got, then I guess I can head home. And who was actually going to head out and go riding once the, uh, the stream was over? I lost that person's name. But at any rate, um, everybody, thanks for coming out, spending a little time with us. Oh, well, Panagio just did uh, come back. I did. Uh, I did get it to start today after ten years. Then V the V and then V twelve, and it was amazing. Send us a quick clip of that. I want to see it. All right, guys. Well, I think we're gonna go ahead and shut it down for today. And just want to say thank you for everybody for coming in, giving me some good questions, spending some time with us. Especially want to say thanks for shopping here with us at Partzilla.com. You make all of this possible, and keep me employed. So keep coming in. Keep coming around. Well, everybody have a great weekend, a great week, and God willing, we will see you again this coming up Friday at 3. Y'all take care.